My friends, I've got a pretty stiff project here that I'm going to have to undertake. And I thought I would show you all about that. It's a lot more than meets the eye. And I'll tell you all about it right after this. Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, about to embark on a very tough project. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, Les Paul knockoff, I guess you'd say. I'm not sure the brand. I'll show you the brand. You can read it yourself. I can't even read that. <laughs> I don't know. This might be some real high-end expensive guitar for all I know. All I know for sure is it's going to be a whole lot of work for me, and you might be going, well, what's wrong with it? I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, you just ain't looking hard enough. Oh my gosh, where have we seen this before? Recently, two mandolins, I've done guitars too like this, but uh, recently there's been two mandolins, if you're, in case you want to look them up, J. Ford mandolin and uh, the Larravee mandolin. You can look those up on, uh, just type in RSW and J. Ford mandolin or RSW Larravee and you'll find it, I'm sure. And basically, I did the same thing to those that I'm going to have to do to this. The complicating factor on this, now see, on the Larravee mandolin, let me back up and tell you, on the Larravee mandolin, it was no problem at all taking the fretboard off because there was no finish on the neck. This has finish on the neck. It's, you know, and it's, you know, finish is like glass. And if you don't think it's like glass, try cutting it and see what you think after you try cutting it. It always chips, cracks, breaks. It depends on the finish, don't get me wrong, but most good finishes are very brittle. That's what you want. That's what helps transfer the sound. A soft finish would be like putting a blanket on your instrument. It doesn't help transfer sound. Well, regardless, whatever this is, and who knows what kind of finish this is, it might even be epoxy for all I know, which is even worse. But the point is, if I take this fingerboard off, which is what I typically would do to fix something like this, it's going to crack this finish all the way up and down on both sides. And guess who gets to fix that? Me. And it ain't easy to fix. And you can't hardly ever make it match. Um, you know, I, I see people doing things all the time on there, and maybe they're just better than me. But, I, you know, when you get down to a guitar, see, like a piece of furniture, it ain't that hard to do because people don't get down like this and look at furniture, but they do with guitars, you know? And it's a lot different. It's really hard to make a repair like this be invisible. And therefore, on this one, I'll be honest with you, I'm not even going to try to make it invisible because it ain't going to happen. It's impossible unless I would refinish this whole neck. If I did that, well, yeah, I'd have a good chance at uh, making it invisible if I refinished the whole thing. But I'm not into that either. That's a lot of work. And even then, I would never get the finish to match from here to here. It'll just never be that color, no matter what I do. It'll never be that color. So, what am I complaining about? Well, let me explain to you. This is not simple. You can't just glue this back. That will not work. Not when it's broke straight off like that. And there's very little wood there. If you stop and think about it, especially below the truss rod there, or in this case, below the truss rod there, I guess is the better way to say it. Uh, there's a little bit of wood on each side, but that's not enough wood to make this hold. I mean, obviously, if it didn't hold in its natural state, it's not going to hold re-glued. So how do you fix it? Well, you have to cut a long taper starting about here somewhere all the way down, down to this point right here on the front. And you have to cut a long taper from about right in here somewhere all the way down to the point under the fingerboard. There's a truss rod in there. That's the problem. That's why I would typically take the fretboard off. I don't want to take the fretboard off this. So is there a chance I can cut this off with the truss rod in there 
leave the truss right in there and still cut the rest of this off and do a good job? And the answer is, I don't know. I might be able to do it. I think I did it once before, but I don't honestly remember that. The other problem is that it, it didn't break off square. If it had broken off perfectly square with the fretboard, I'd be fine, be hometown done. I'd be completely happy with that, but this is not the case. It broke off jagged and it, it goes back under the fretboard. So the problem with that is, I really need to fix that first so that I don't have all this uh, jagged stuff there to try to repair individually. I would like to put this thing back together if it would just happen to go back together perfectly and who thinks that's going to happen? Not me. Even if I do get it back together there's pieces missing. So I'm not even sure that's the good answer in this case. I was thinking about gluing it back together uh, like this and then it would fill in a lot of these holes. I'm going to look in the case and see if these chips are there. If they are, I want to get it all glued back just like it, it, like it came from the factory first. Then saw it square off. That way all these little chips and everything are in place. Saw it square off, then cut my tapers. That's the approach I want to take. I guess my first thing is look through the case and see if these little chips are in there. If they're not, there ain't a chance on this earth that this is going to be an invisible fix. Too bad, but it's reality. Well, I examined the case pretty thoroughly, and that's the only chip I found with finish on it. So, I'll try to put that back in place once I get this glued back. I really think I want to glue this back regardless whether or not it's going to be a perfect match or not because I think that's still better than trying to work with this mess that we have here. Once I get that glued back, then I can saw it straight off, I think. I don't know. I'm going to give it some more thought, but that's, that's my best idea right at the moment. This is not an easy one. This is one of the hardest ones I've run into. I don't know if this complicates anything, but I just noticed there is a scarf joint here already. This scarf joint runs this way. I don't know if you can see that little scarf joint or not, but there's it's kind of in a semicircle goes this way. My scarf joint's going to go the exact opposite. I don't think that'll complicate anything. I'm trying to look here to see if there's any scarf joints here. I don't see anything on this end. Oh my goodness. Well, I've been contemplating here what I'm going to do. I, while I don't think it's going to help me all that much to glue this back together, I'm going to try to get it to glue back together. I think it won't hurt anything if that works, um, I don't think. <sighs> Wish me luck. So I'm going to fill this whole thing with glue and then I'll probably take a paintbrush here and get, get that glue to move around a little bit. I'll fill this in with glue. I'll just take this brush and I'll get in here and try to wiggle this glue around and get it in all the little places. This is really a, a tough break. It really is. Probably the toughest one I've done like this. It is not going to be a simple one. Okay, I got the glue in there as good as anybody could reasonably expect to get it in there. Get it on this end now too. When you want something like this to hold, you got to have 100% coverage. I've said it many, many times. And especially on something like this. I'm also thinking, and I don't know, I may be wrong on this, but I'm kind of thinking this will help act as a lubricant and push this together a little bit better too, I'm hoping. Though it may counter, be counterproductive. I'm not really sure on that part. I know on a lot of things it's very hard to slide them together once you get glue on it, and on other things it makes it much easier, or it slides around so much you wish it wouldn't. But on this, I don't know. I'm just supposing it might help me. 
all right, so now I've got to get that in place and get it in the right place. That's the trick. That's as close to the right place as I'm probably going to get it. I'm going to take my little rubber hammer and try to tap it together. Even better. It's, it's actually feeling pretty flush. Ugh. Very hard to push together. There's probably a few fibers that aren't in place correctly. And that's probably what the problem is. But how would you fix that? Well, I don't know. I'm going to get some water for cleanup and try to do some more pushing on this. Okay, I got some hot water here. I'm going to wash this off a little bit. Just trying to keep it as clean as I can. That side's not too bad. It's really hard to tell if I'm getting it where it should be or not. Crack looks like it's a little bit smaller each time. Even if I get it just right, I don't know how to clamp it and hold it there. Uh, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Now, will it hold there or will it stay there? I don't know. I think I'm just going to put a few things here to keep this from falling down. And just let it sit there because there's no good way to clamp that that I can think of. So we're just going to leave that undisturbed for 24 hours and see what happens. First thing I'm going to do is try to saw it off straight into right here. And I'm using my little razor saw because it only has a 9 thousandths inch kerf. This won't be easy, but I'm hoping I can get it done. Well, that kind of failed. I have to work on this first and then I'll try it again. There we go. Sawed off nice and straight. Really the only part that matters to me is right up here at the peg head that it's straight. The rest of this is going to be sawn away anyway. Same way with this here. It's just the, the part that's uh, right under the uh, saddle extension there, right under that part is the only part that really matters. The rest of this will be sawn away. What I'm going to try to do is make a straight line on here. Then I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and saw it off. And I'm kind of just doing this by eye. is the way I do a lot of things. I just have to see how it goes. Putting a scratch on here. I'm going to try to get a scratch on this part too to help me visually stay in line. May not be able to scratch this part too easy. It's... I'll hold this in the vise temporarily just so I can mark it. So there's the line I'm going to try to saw. I'm going to try to leave the binding so I don't have to mess with putting in new binding and stuff later. We'll see if that works. Well, I'm at the band saw. I'm rigged up to try to cut this. Wish me luck. Well, that's about as good as I can do it. Um, got it. It kind of bumps out right here, so I'm going to put it in the sander and try to mostly concentrate on this end, hardly any on this end, and try to get this one smooth plane. It's in the wind that you're leaving me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. Well, it's not as perfect as I would like to have gotten because this looks like there's a little bit of a low spot right here. It's very minimal. I think I'm going to live with it like this because if I go anymore, I'm going to be getting into my binding here, and I don't want to get into the binding. One second thought, uh, maybe I could go longer here, and I think I will. I think I'll just go longer here, maybe taper back, and maybe I can cut some more of this out. I'm going to try that. I hope it works. People 
you up and leave me There's something you should know Just sit right down beside me Just once before you go I don't feel like that's accomplishing very much. This isn't that bad. It's pretty close. I think the I think it'll be fine. It's got a good glue surface through here. This might be just a teeny bit, you know, open uh, area with the glue, but it's pretty minimal. Wish that hadn't happened that way. The I guess the blade just cut in a little deep there or something. I just didn't have it controlled as well as I would have liked, but that's what I got. Well, my friends, you know, uh, that Monday morning quarterback thing, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Kind of wishing, instead of cutting it off on that end of the shelf, you know, on the mandolins that work great, but on, on this guitar, I kind of wish I'd have cut it off at this end of the shelf. And the reason is, I didn't realize they got this extra piece of binding that comes up and meets the peg head at an angle like that. And, well, it's, I got it upside down. But anyway, it, it comes up and meets the peg head like that. And that little piece of binding right there is kind of my downfall. Because I want to cut this at an angle. Part of me says dig that binding out of there and try to save it. This piece is already broken anyway. This piece, the tip of it's broke. So I think I'm just going to cut it and just ignore that binding. And just deal with it later and I'll piece something in there if I have to or whatever because I don't think I can get this stuff out you know you can't think of everything and I just didn't think of that I, I truly don't think that binding's gonna come out of there I'm not gonna spend a lot of time or effort trying to get it out in one piece but if it comes out that's great there it, it actually did come out in not too bad a shape. Not sure I'll use it anyway, but that one came out. This one here, it's already broken in half. I doubt seriously there's any point in even trying to get this one out, but I'll try it. If it comes out in, in just two good pieces, I can always glue those two pieces together on the end, melt them back together with some of those solvents like acetone or something, and then I wouldn't have to make the piece at least. I'll give it a shot. It might come out. Well, that didn't help nothing. Would have been nice if this would have been one of those guitars where the neck would just unscrew off of it, but it's not one of those. So I have to deal with this the way it's made. And I want to figure out how to draw a line on this and, and cut this and then I'm going to try to score that line and then I'm probably just going to chisel this off. And that's my best guess as to how I'm going to approach it. That may be a mistake, but on the other hand, it'll save a lot of crud if I can get it off of there. First question is how I'm going to scribe it and, and get a good, accurate mark on here. So I'll have to think on that a little bit. Well, my friends, typically one of these uh, oscillating cutters and a guitar would not go together at all. And I may prove that they should never go together, but I'm gonna give this a shot. I have some tape on here, just as kind of a ballpark eyeball reference, it, and that's just an idea. It, it probably isn't even gonna look like that when I'm done. But I thought I'd start with this, and I got this round oscillating uh, cutter on here so that it, the, the edge of the uh, cutter Typically they look like this, so, and I didn't want these edges to hit things, and that's what would happen. This barely seems to move. So that's why I chose this blade, and I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna start up here where it doesn't matter. And that did a pretty darn nice job, actually. The problem is I can't use it very much anyway because the truss rod's gonna be really close. So, I don't know how much good it's gonna do me. I think what I'll try to do instead is just take it and make a line around here that I can follow. And uh, then I think I'm just gonna get the chisels out and knock this off with chisels. I don't know anything else to try since I don't wanna take the fretboard off this. My brother's in the shop and he's holding this guitar for me. I'm going to just try to score a line. I'm not going to really try to cut that deep. I just want to score the finish. 
Well, that actually worked even better than I thought it would work. Now I'm going to give it another shot here and hope it works as good on this side. I think that's all I'm going to do and I'll get the rest with chisels. I'm pretty good with the chisel. I don't think it'll take me long at all. Well, that wasn't exactly a pretty thing to do, but on the other hand, you got to do something, you know. I just try something and if it doesn't work, then I modify and I try not to go so far that I can't uh, recover, you know. I don't want my chisels to hit the truss rod, so I'm trying to get close without hitting it. There we go, we're right, right down to it there. Um, I don't think I hit it. I'm going to get me a, my regular wood uh, mallet and I'll be right back. I made this out of a stick of firewood nearly 40 years ago. You can see how it's pretty beat up. I recently did something that did most of that. I didn't care. I just had to have something that would beat on something and it worked. Uh, but I may have to make me a new one now. But it'll still serve the purpose for right now. The reason you want a mallet like this is you don't have to watch this end uh, to make sure you're accurate. This big clunky head, plus it's got a lot of weight to drive the chisel, so that's why a mallet like this is preferred. Oops, I hit the truss rod there, that wasn't good. I may have to just go back to the manual approach here without the mallet at all. So I'm just taking the chisel and just working this off. It's, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. It's not real smooth yet and all that. And I don't expect it to be for a little while. It's gonna be kinda ugly for a while until I get it all figured out. Remember when we first met, we had a love so fine. We vowed we love each other until the end of you can see how that's working. It's ugly, but it's going to give me a, a good product in the end, I think. I'll show you more as I get a little further along. You can probably see all the wood I've chipped out right here. It's uh, all over the place. Now I'm taking a, a file and I'm trying to level off like this to make it one continuous plane. That's going to be the hard part. But once I get that, then we're pretty much home free. Here's what I was trying to avoid. I just knocked a big chip out of the finish right there. With that file, it grabbed it. I didn't think it was, this is not that coarse of a file, but it still knocked a big chip out. Doggone it. Well, we can repair that. But... One chip is considerably better than the hundreds of chips that would have been on both sides, so. I'll take that, but I wished it wouldn't have happened. One of my wonderful viewers sent me this little tiny six millimeter finger plane. I just sharpened it up real good, and it seems to be the perfect thing for getting in here and cleaning up uh, what I need to clean up. This side here is a little thicker, and it's hard to file this because you can't get a file in here. And this little plane seems to be doing the job real nice. And what I've been doing is checking the length of this and trying to get it flat. I'm pretty flat. It's, it's got a little underbow in places, so I'm just trying to cut all that out. If you look close, you can see the parts that were broken back in there. That's why I wanted to glue it back together first, because those chips and things would be really hard to replace at this stage. By gluing it back together ahead of time, then they glued themselves back in place. Still, I'm going to have to take this back further to get my flatness. That's not a big deal. It's just that I have to do it. So. It's in the wind, it's in the wind. That you're leaving me again There's no disguise, it's in your eyes You can't fool me this time
could probably get by with that the way it is, but I just try to get it as good as I can possibly get it. There's really no point in getting any big hurry on these things. Dug in just a little bit more on this side here than I did on this side. Kind of regret that, but it's kind of the way it is. And I don't think you'll be able to tell that once I'm done, but it would have been a little easier to patch it up had that not happened. But you, you know, you're just guessing on this stuff. You're having to do it by eye, and there's nothing flat and square that you can go against. So you just take what you get sometimes. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. And that's kind of the way this works out. You just have to go with what you get and make it work. This side's got, oh, probably 10 thousandths under bow in it. This side's probably got about eight. So we're getting very close. Or we could just call it relief, since that's what it, the big buzzword always is. It's got a little more relief than I want. <laughs> Especially on a flat joint. All right, I think I'll get the sanding blocks out now. I think we're just about just about there. Well, I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. Um, I'm going to leave it there for today. I've been sanding it and got it real nice and smooth. There's the least little bit of light just in this little spot right there and really no light anywhere else. So I think that's good enough. I think the wood will conform to that and be very strong. But that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I'll pick up on that tomorrow. As you can see, I've got this uh, propped up here rather precariously, I might add. And I basically eyeballed the angle with my pattern that I typically use, and I have that set pretty close. Then I set my angle gauge to this inside angle. And the angle gauge, uh, I can use that now to cut a uh, filler piece for this. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of mahogany, or actually I believe it's going to be sapili, but it's very similar. And uh, it should serve the purpose, so I'm going to get started on that. Well, I've done lots of checking, testing, comparing it to a, my standard pattern that I use. I'm going to have to go a little shallower than my standard pattern if I want to make this one piece of wood work out where I don't have to patch in pieces, and I definitely don't want to patch in pieces. So I've, I've dropped my angle back a little bit, and uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but i just explaining that I am doing that a little bit. I'm trying to get the most out of this piece of wood for the thickness and the length and all that, and that should do it, I would think. I'm going to draw it on here, and then I'm going to lay the parts here and see if I still think they look okay. Now I'm going to try somehow to lay this up here, and I don't know if that's going to work or not. Almost impossible. If I had the neck loose, I could do all this. But since I don't, I can't really do all the things I'm trying to do here. If I do it right here, just as a test, I can test my angle at least, I think. Just draw it right here, just to test that it's going to catch the whole patch that I need to put in. So I can line up the fretboard with the edge of the wood, set this on here. Boy, it looks like it'll just barely catch it. Actually, that's not the right way. Now that I think about it, I have to put it like this. It's complicated. So I have to make the top of the board match this angle. You know, like that. That's the way it has to be. That's exactly right. And then I got to do this until I get those two parts matching up. 
and it looks like there will be just enough wood. I hope so. I'll make it work one way or the other. So now I'm going to have to go over to the bandsaw and cut this long angle. I know you found another who wants your love so fine. But darling, please don't leave me. Just take a little time. Well, there you go. It cut off pretty straight. Now we'll take it over to the sander and clean that up. You know I love you, darling. Off camera, I cut this board down to, you know, a much more manageable, manageable piece. So I made it just wide enough to fit the peg head on there and, you know, I'll have to cut way more off of it here. But I think while I have it uh, in this block form, I'm going to cut the truss rod slot in this piece. And um, anyway, the trick of that is, yeah, that's going to be really tricky, actually, now I think about it. I can't just cut it like that. I thought that would work, but it won't unless I angle this piece up. Um, and that's what I'll have to do. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. I'll have to think on that for a while, on how I'm going to do that. Because it's not a straight slot through there, it just it's a slot about this long. And it's, it's basically cutting through here. So I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Okay, I am just going to try something. I'm going to go over to the table saw, center this up, the blade up on this. And I'm going to, I've got this here to set the angle. So when I lay this down on the table, this will hold this up a little bit. Because I'm only trying to cut from basically about here to about here. And uh, I'm just going to go see how that goes. I'm just going to barely raise the blade, make a cut or two, and then just raise it a little more, make a cut or two, just until I decide that, you know, I've got this figured out. Because it's not a simple idea here to, to cut a slot in, on this angle. You're, you're crossing this uh, dividing line right there. And it has to be cut, you know, basically straight across this angle. So it's deeper right here than back here and so forth. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I got to do. I barely have the blade exposed at all, just, you know, like it might be cutting a sixteenth of an inch deep. As I mentioned, I've got this little block two-way taped on here and it just fell off. That's not going to help me much if that doesn't stay. And I'm going to slide it through here, then I'll turn it around and slide it through to get, keep the slot in the center. At least that's my plan right now. Let's see if that works. Okay, the concept is right. I just need to make this a little thinner, I think, because I'm already a lot closer to this end than I am to that end. So this needs to be just a little thinner. Okay, I found a little thinner strip here. I'm going to try that. I'm going to just crank this up ever so slightly. Well, that didn't work. I, I'm actually cutting past this mark now by just a little bit. So, I guess maybe the first one I had was the right one. I'm going to go back to the first one I had and try it again. Trial and error. Here we go. It's in the wind, it's in the wind That you're leaving me again There's no disguise, it's in your eyes You can't fool me this time So I'm going to go over and check it against the uh, actual guitar and see if this looks like this is working. We're getting close. Well, if the footage turned out, you saw me over there at the table saw, notching out that groove there. Now, honestly, I didn't get it far enough. I know that already. But I got chicken uh, trying to do it there. 
and I think it, I can do better with just the Dremel tool now, now that I've got it close, and uh, I'll figure the rest of it out with the Dremel tool. So here I go. Okay, I'm going to give this a shot with the Dremel tool. Here I go. Well, not until I plug it in, though. Yeah, it, they always work better when you plug them in. It's really hard to spin it fast enough by hand. It's in the wind, it's in the wind, it's in the wind. I think I need it to go just a little wider. It's in the wind, you win again. That looks pretty good right there. Getting very close. Yeah. Gotta go gotta bring it back a little bit more yet. Let's see if that'll work. Getting gotta be getting close. I think that's pretty close. I'm gonna have to look at it and tweak it a little bit more, I think. That looks pretty good. I think I'm. I think I might be there. I think that's it. Right there. It's. It's. It fits. I may call that good enough. I think I've got this just about where I want it. And now I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and tr trace around this and get a rough profile and cut out some of this wood because it's just too much to deal with. Well, I'm going to just cut out this much right here for now. So I just cut this part here off by eyeball. I just, you know, I just profiled it, just rough drew it and just rough profiled it. I, you know, made sure I left plenty of meat and it should work. I think I'm about ready to go ahead and get this thing glued up. This is such a long angle that I don't think it's going to slide around very much, plus the truss rod's keeping it from sliding sideways. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and get the glue on it and get this part clamped up. You may find out that I have to change that idea, but right now that's what I'm going to go with. I don't want a lot of glue squeeze out around this truss rod, so I'm going to put it on a little sparingly and, and just, you know, brush it around and make sure I get good coverage, but I would prefer not to have a lot of glue squeezing around. This part back here is not going to be even touching, so there's no point in getting glue there. That should be pretty good. I think I'm going to clean my brush up and let this tack up a little bit for a second or two before I put it together. Okay, it's been a minute or two and I'm going to go ahead and get this clamped on here. Getting it, trying to get it just lined up just right. That looks pretty good. I'm going to check this now to make sure this is still going to fit. Well, this looks like this is working. This is a rubber padded clamps, so that's what I'm using. In fact, I think I've got that back a little far. I'm going to leave it about right here. That's about the end of the actual joint. And I'm just going to double check that this still fits. Seems like it's just a hair crooked. I'm going to put another clamp or two on this. Well, that worked really well. I think I could probably go ahead and get this glued on. Well, I don't know. That'll probably work. It's just barely fitting there, but I think that's okay. I don't know if this part's going to slide or not. I'm going to go ahead and try it, and if I have to put a couple nails in there, I will. I've got a very, very thin coverage of glue, which is what I really want. I want it just as thin as I can get it. I'm going to put glue on this side too, again, but just as thin as I can get it to spread on there, I think. 
If I have too much glue, I'll take it off with the brush. In fact, I think I'm going to let it tack up a little bit more. And before I try to clamp it, give it another minute or so. And I set that on there and uh, I think it's going to work. I might let it get a little more tacky before I try and put the clamps on it so it doesn't move on me. Well, this isn't going to work for me. I'm going to have to put some nails in there because it just keeps sliding around. And I kind of thought that would be the case. Nothing's that simple. The neck part was easy, but this part's going to be difficult because it's so flat and so big. So I'll get a couple little nails, drive them in here, and uh, show you what that looks like here in a second. I got some little half-inch brads. I'm going to drive them up here fairly close to the uh, to this end of the peg head. Okay, I've got the little nails in there, and I just cut them off with my little pliers. Uh, so. I would ordinarily drill the other side, but I don't think it's going to be that terribly necessary. So I'm just going to put it on here and clamp it in place. I'm pretty sure that I've just barely got any nub of those nails sticking up, so I'm pretty sure that clamps will force it in place. At least I think it will. But we'll see here in a minute if that's true. Well, there's what she looks like all clamped up. I went back and tightened every clamp again and now I'll let that set overnight and we'll move on to the next step. Well my friends I'm gonna take this outside and I'm gonna rough shape it with this uh, rotary rasp and I'm just gonna knock off enough to make it a little easier to finish file. Well, I roughed it out with the uh, grinder, but, uh, you know, I, I sure I could have taken more off, but boy, you know, if you go that much too far, then you're just too far and you can't recover. So it's way better to just leave it for hand finishing. And that's where I'm at right there. It's getting there, but it's going to take quite a bit more work. I'll show you progress as I make some. This dream to me, so really seen. And in this dream I came upon a man. A man who left no footprints in the sand. Dressed on the white, we walked a long way. For those in need, we'd often stop and pray. Our journey guided only by the night. And yet we walked as if there was a line. Then he said, walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on judgment day. Well, it's starting to get into the shape of a guitar neck, but uh, there's a lot more to do. I'm going to do some more of that off camera and I'll show you down the road. But now that I've got this roughly shaped, and again, it's pretty rough, I want to get this in uh, 
conformance, you know, get it near the final shape so that I can have a better feel for this whole area here on how to shape it. So I've two-way taped these two blocks of wood on here just to act as a skid for two reasons. Number one, that'll keep me from scratching up the peg head as I slide it through my thickness sander because I'll be sliding it on this surface. And number two, it raises it up above these frets so that they don't bump or hit the uh, table. So it, it serves two purposes. But anyway, I'm going to go over there to my thickness sander now and I'm basically just going to slide it through the sander up to in the round rotation of that will come to right here and that's how I'll make that volute. Then he said walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said find the love of God on judgment day. Well here's a look at the current status. It's getting better but still a long ways to go. So I'm going to use uh, Alan Dust's uh, sander that he sent me and work on this a little bit. At least that's my plan. It may be a little awkward with this. It, typically I do this when the neck is off the instrument, but in this case I don't have an option. So I'm just going to try to make this work. done that with a cordless drill but uh, my cordless drill is up there at the rental property and I didn't feel like running up there to get it. That worked pretty darn good. Getting closer. Still a ways to go. I've done a lot more shaping on this off camera. I ran this through my thickness sander and got that nice curl there. Uh, we're gonna leave this volute on here. And uh, anyway, it's getting close, but the, this is still a little wide through here. So I'm gonna take my Dremel tool and try to narrow that down. I don't know if I should just do it with a sanding block. This side here is pretty close. This side here is still a little high. So I'll try this side. He said walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, bend the helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on Judgment Day. Well, that's about as close as I'm going to get it that way. So now I've got to sand the whole side of this. It's definitely an epoxy resinous type finish. I can smell it as I sand it like a fiberglass type finish. That's also why it chips so bad when you, like if I wanted to take that fingerboard off, I knew that would be a nightmare. Well, I've got a ton more of that fine sanding to do, so I'll show you progress as I make some. Well, my friends, another day or two has gone by and uh, when I put these tuning keys on here, I drilled the holes out and I chipped out a little bit. So I fixed all that, sanded it down, refinished this again or put more finish on it. It looks real nice now. There's no problem or anything. But anyway, it delayed me a while. I just I did all that off camera. I just wanted to let you know. Um, so really, I'm you know I'm about ready to start stringing this thing up. I've I put the uh, strap button back in. I've got the bridge and the saddle thing hooked on here. And um, I was trying to, you know, hopefully to use the original nut, but the slot's way bigger now. I don't know how I got that bigger. I really don't. Yeah, I, I really don't. I, Cause I used the same thing. You know, I, I, I didn't cut away the slot. So I don't see how that got bigger, but it did. So it doesn't really matter. The fretboard's the same. As long as I keep the nut against the fretboard, it'll work just fine. There's no problem at all, zero. It's just that I have to make a new nut, a wider nut. So I went looking in the stores here to see if I had one, and this one almost is wide enough, but it's not quite wide enough either. So I'm gonna have to make one from scratch. So I guess I'll get busy.
Well, I've said many times that when it comes to setup, the nut is where you spend most of your time and honestly, you get the least of your return um, other than the action. I mean, your, your action at the nut, of course, is important, but the rest of it, you know, the spacing and the building of the nut, all the things that it goes into it, it takes the most time and you don't get that much in return in terms of your sound. Your sound is affected way back here, mostly, uh, at least on an acoustic guitar. Now, anyway, um, I'm just thought I'd show you a little bits and pieces here. I'm, you know, I've got this piece of bone, this antler uh, rough shape, but I'm just trying to, you know, you take a natural item like this that has its own natural curve and everything, and I'm just trying to adapt it to make it work for this guitar. And, you know, sometimes it works better than others, but I think we'll make it. I'm rounding off the, the front, I guess you'd say, the, the edge toward the peg head, partly because I'm using the natural curve of the antler, so I have to kind of round the rest of it off to kind of match that to some degree. It's starting to look pretty good. It's still real tall, I think probably quite a bit taller than it needs to be. Um, that's a little tricky. You try to take it down slowly. You don't want to go too far too fast because that sure mess up everything. Just trying to give myself a reference line here. I'm taking the old saddle there, just kind of using that. So I'm going to take off the bottom of this. Well, that looks pretty good to me, so I guess we'll get some strings and start marking this up. We'll see where it takes us. Those are just some starter grooves. I don't know how close they'll be. Probably not that close, but you just never know. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get the strings on it, and then I'll show you what it looks like after that. Well, my friends, we have got this guitar finished. A uh, few days have gone by since the last clip that you saw, and uh, it sat over the weekend, and I tuned it up this morning, and... It's been a little while since I tuned it, so hopefully it's still in tune. fine everything seems to be real good the actions real nice on it I don't think that neck will ever break again if you would please give me a big thumbs up if you're not yet subscribed well please be sure to get that done thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time <laughs>